Hi everyone, my name is Wu Jing. I'm from China. In Chinese, my name means beautiful silence. Silence is very well appreciated in our culture. It is courtesy, wisdom, respect, beauty. For example, Confucius said, "No talking when you are eating or when you are in your bed." So growing up in this culture, well, I am introverted and shy. There were a lot of times that. The When I really, really wanted to express my thoughts or feelings, but just couldn't. For example, there was a girl. I saw her brushing her teeth with the water running, and I was an environmental resident at that time, so I really wanted to talk to her and suggest her turning the water off. But well, I just couldn't. So I stood there watching her. Hoping that somehow my presence could magically have her turn off the water. <laughs> People say that eyes are the windows to the soul, and apparently my eyes were not big enough, <laughs> because she didn't notice me at all, and the water just kept running until she left. About one year ago, I visited a special male friend, and things got really complicated, and I just couldn't express myself at all. My thoughts, my feelings, my words—they all stuck in my throat, and just couldn't get them out. Right before I left, I wrote down everything that was in my mind, and I read to him as if I was reading somebody else's journal. That wasn't fun. That was super awkward, <laughs> confusing for both of us. At the airport, I happened to listen to a song. It's called "Shall We Talk" by Ethan Chen. It is about how. Lovers and the family don't talk to each other anymore. And the lyric says, "If the silence is too heavy, don't just brush it aside." So that was a great song. I listened to it again and again. And somehow I felt a little voice in me that was saying, "No, I wanna be able to talk when I really want to." But I didn't know how. I studied psychology, so the first thing I did was. Searching for the research about this, or a more nerdy way to call it, literature review, and I did find many research about this. For example, one research showed that a higher score for openness to feelings was associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality. It's great, but no research told me how to do it. And the next thing I did was I spent a whole night googling it. <laughs> no more.、Um, and I also, most information I found online was about openness and the benefits of it. The only two sites that I found that might be helpful was first, a marriage coach website. She she got a divorce because of a lack of communication between her and her ex-husband. So she quit her job and became a marriage coach, helping people in a similar situation. So I thought, well. Maybe I will need it in the future, but I wasn't married yet. <laughs> <laughs> And the the other one was the website about intimacy phobia. I remember that was three o'clock in the morning, and I was checking all the symptoms listed on that website, and I didn't get enough to have intimacy phobia. <laughs> <laughs> so my Google search also failed. That was just a really weird feeling. I knew being open was good, both psychologically and physically. And actually, I knew how to do it. Like it's simple, just to talk. But somehow, I just feel like no, I don't know how to do it. Something was missing. So, in order to find the secret key to openness, I did what every little kid would do: ask. So I started with my friends. I asked the age of them. So, did you ever not say anything when you really, really wanted to? Honestly, at the beginning, I wasn't sure if that's gonna be helpful at all. Because, hey, this is America. <laughs> Maybe it's a stereotype, but Americans are known for being open. However, my friends, most of them, they told me yes, and they shared the story with me. Later, I also went to the street, went to cafeteria, the park, and asked. Random people the same question. I was living at Atlanta at that time, so one day I snuck into the library of Georgia Tech with my friends' help, and I got many notes there, which made me think, 
maybe, maybe the key to openness is starting engineering. <laughs> but there was one guy. He just looked like other engineering guys who told me no, and initially he told me no. But when I was leaving, he changed his mind, and he changed his mind again. So after he did that back and forth many times, I just told him, "Hey, I know it. I'm just like you. I know you want to tell me something, and to make your life easier, I'm not leaving until you tell me." He was relieved and shared his story with me. When those people, when those people were sharing this story with me, their eyes were shining, and I really feel. I don't want to just be a listener. I wished I could be the person they really wanted to talk to, or maybe just be them for a few minutes and do it for them. Somehow, my empathy for those people allowed me to empathize with myself, and those shining eyes. They give me the courage that make me believe that, yes, I will do it. And I wanted to freeze those moments, like having a fridge, put those moments in, and keep them always fresh, so I can remember how deeply inspired and touched I felt when I really need such courage in the future. So in order to do that, I create a blog called Shall We Talk, named after that song. And also, with many people's help, I created this、um, whiteboard animation video. No, Thomas. You can't just not call your family. We love you, and you need to talk to us. No, Carl. I miss you, and I think about you every day. And I wish that I still saw you. No, Dad. I think we should talk more, and we should be open to more to my decisions. No, Madeline. You need to know that everyone cares about you, and that we care enough to tell you to stop. No, boss. Treat your employees like you want to be treated. No, Ed. I just want to know why we know nothing about each other after twenty years. No, Mom. I think we should have a better relationship. No, Derek. I just don't want to be friends. I want to be more. I'm not asking for a long time commitment, but I was just wondering, will you go to spring fling with me? No, Kyle. When someone tells you to stop, that's when you stop. Not the first time, not the second time, not when you scream. When you when they say no, you should stop right away. Shall we talk? Shall we talk? Shall we talk? Shall we talk? Shall we talk?
So many people told me it was also very helpful for them to rethink about their stories, share them, and hear other people's stories. And also because my own failure of Google search, so I created this blog which I mentioned, where I shared my stories, other people's stories, images, sounds, poems, or anything that creates a moment. And it also allows anyone to post on it. So it's like a platform. For people who face the cha same challenge as I do, to share and to inspire each other, it's like a public fridge for <laughs> all those touching and the powerful moments. By the way, the song on the homepage now—it's called "Words We Don't Say" by Leslie Gore. She happens to be a Sarah Lawrence alumna. So, in addition to the star story sharing, in the past one year, I also learned a lot from people, and I. Conclude them into several very simple principles. They are incomplete and they might be wrong, but I like to share them with you. The first is truth, truth, truth. This is the concept from non-violent communication. A lot of times, the way we say the words can change its meaning from what we want it to be. So we need to pay attention to our words, especially when we are nervous. So that we don't、so、we don't let our words distort the truth we want to tell. And the second is love never fails. It's from Bible, my favorite verse. It's simple. If we really want to understand or be understood, we should just keep trying. It's like the concept of limit in mathematics. Maybe we'll never get it, but we are getting closer and closer to understand people. And the third is fear never goes away. Like my friend Emily once said, it's just like doing exercise; you have to do it again and again. <laughs> I've been challenging myself for like one year now, but today on this open stage, my legs are not shaking, but my toes are. <laughs> <laughs> but、um, I learned to accept the fear and maybe have a cup of tea with it. And the good thing about it is, fear can be our friends. When I was having my conference with my psychology professor, Dr. Ling Lewis, I asked him, "So why, why do humans have such irrational fear that keep us from doing what we really want to do?" I was expecting an answer from maybe evolutionary point of view, but he just looked at me and said, "Because we don't want to screw it up." <laughs> Fear could be our friends. It really tells us what is important to us, what we care, so we can work on it. We can prepare for it, so we don't screw it up. And it takes time to get ready, like the ancient Greek said, "Know thyself." Only after we are connected to ourselves can we be connected to others. It takes time to know what we really want to say. But you will never be ready. Sorry.、Um, no matter how much we prepared, it's just so hard to get to a specific point that we need. We know we are ready to go. And sometimes we just need a little push to open our mouth, our heart, and let the words flow. And the people, people in the video and in the blog I create, who share their stories, their words, they are exactly offering such push. Every time when I heard a story, I saw a possibility for them, and I also saw a possibility for myself. So, hi everyone. My name is Wu Jing. In Chinese, it means beautiful silence. But if you break it, break the first character down, the meaning of my name becomes a girl who doesn't always keep silent anymore. Thank you.